Sits. Okay, uh, so my name is Hugo Martins. Uh, I come from Wouter Consulting. Um, and the presentation uh, uh, is about using web processes services, web processing services um, with uh, Ordnance Survey uh, open data. Well, this is the outline of the presentation. Um, we'll start um, how, uh, explaining how we came up with the idea of building a something which is we called Catchment Finder. And then we go on uh, speaking uh, what it is in fact and how it is working. And in the end we'll make some, draw some uh, highlight conclusions. Uh, we are um, specializing mainly uh, in uh, open source GIS, both desktop and uh, web GIS. We do software development for QGIS and also web GIS uh, bespoke applications. And uh, within the GIS world also we are uh, having a niche uh, uh, specialization, uh, specialization in numerical modeling concerning water engineering. And because we do uh, a lot of water engineering, um, we have commonly, we came up with the idea of building catchment finder because we commonly uh, use uh, a simple procedure uh, that takes a bit of um, processing in the desktop uh, GIS applications, which is to calculate a river basin. And we do that a lot for our modeling. Um, and it was something that we realized that it was happening lots of times and we had to process all the data and then uh, make some quality analysis of this data. And yeah, it was taking some time, you know, to tweak all the parameters in all the operations that we were making. So we came up with this idea of building uh, Catchment Finder, which uh, um, we use for uh, this kind of uh, simple processes and also as a proof of concept of web processing services. Um, so the catchment finder is aims mainly at uh, combining all this, so we, we pre-process the data that we took um, uh, into a database and then we make this process available through the web. And as I was saying, it doesn't mean that it needs to be used through the web browser, although Catchment Finder itself is also a WebGIS application, but the web processing service itself can be used also through the desktop. Um, so, uh, what it means is that it doesn't matter if you are a GIS guy or not, uh, you can use it uh, in a straight way, uh, <coughs> way, in a straight way, because you don't need to know how to... Uh, do uh, each step of the processing um, uh, chain, let's say. So, first thing, without, uh, we cannot run a process without data. So this was the first thing that we need to came up, and yeah, great, uh, Ordnance Survey is providing several open data um, data sets, and from those we took out Landform Panorama, which is uh, a, a, a data set which is uh, having a vector um, layer uh, with contours and also uh, a digital terrain model uh, in ASCII GRI format, I suppose. I, I'm not sure about that, but it's, I know it's a raster file. And also we took the strategy um, data set, which is just a vector um, with providing contextual information, you know, like uh, urban areas, uh, streets and uh, gazetteer. So we took that also just for uh, putting some more information to give context in the web GIS application that I'm going to show you later. Oh, the strategy is based where? This is on the Ordnance Survey um, uh, website for open data. So you can download all this data, it's, it's open, and not only you can uh, freely get it, but you also can use it for making uh, your uh, kind of studies, analysis, and make oh. some outputs of it. So it's open data. <clears throat> so, now we have the data, we have to find a way of providing this service that we had in mind. So, this chained uh, uh, model of op GIS operations that allow one to calculate a river basin. So, what to use? Well, we obviously wanted to use uh, OGC uh, standards, and for that there is one which is called WPS, which is, stands for Web Processing Service. And mainly this, uh, uh, this standard is specifying a way of communication between client and server uh, that allows one to not only find processes that are available in the server, but uh, um, execute this process in a way that is typ typically done in a GIS desktop application, but through the web. So the great advantage of it is that you can have really, really from simple things to really complex models 
in the back end and you just need to give the inputs and you'll receive the outputs and you don't need to make all the operations in between, the process will take care of it. So that's the big advantage of it. How is it working then? So uh, the standard is specifying three types of requests. So each time uh, the client sends a request to the server, the server uh, understands this request, which can be get capabilities, describe, process, or execute, and then it sends back the answer to, to the client. <coughs> this, um, all these, these requests, there are three, so get capabilities. Uh, the request looks like uh, the URL that I'm showing you, and it returns like an XML response, which is uh, basically describing service metadata. So it's describing, giving general information to the user, um, who is providing the service, and what kind of processes are available um, in the server. For example, you, he you see here, uh, in this lower part, it says process offering. So there it describes how many uh, web processing servers are available in this, uh, in this server. So once you know which processing services you have, you want to know what they are doing exactly. And that's why there is describe process, which is another request, uh, where then you use a simple identifier that you got from the previous offering list. So you say, oh, okay, I see that there is a, a processing services that is called simple grass, but what does it do? And that's why you use this request, and then you can see that it has a title, uh, an abstract, and also it's telling you uh, which inputs it needs to take so that it can uh, run on the server side, and also it's describing what are the outputs of this process. So you can see here uh, in the lower part uh, that you have at least three outputs from this, uh, from this process. Okay, now you know that you have a process that you want to run, you know which inputs you need to, uh, to use to, uh, to, to give to the process, so now you can execute it. And for example, for that process that I was showing, uh, we, sorry, I just come back, so you can see here that is taking an X coordinate and it would also take a Y coordinate. I just hide it because it was too much. And that's what we are specifying in the execute process. We give back to the server an X uh, coordinate and a Y coordinate and then from that point the process will calculate uh, the catchment itself. So this is how you work with the standard. So yeah, now we have the standard okay, uh, we have the data, what are we going to use uh, to provide this, this service? So we have to cho uh, choose a, 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 an architecture to implement this, uh, our objective. And obviously open source was the, the, the way to go forward and we had in mind to build the server side and also a client side. So, uh, for the server side, uh, we went, uh, we were using already Grass. We have lots of experience with Grass. We like Grass. Grass is a, one of the, of the first open source uh, desktop, uh, GIS desktop applications. And yeah, we were doing lots of processes with it. So we decided, yeah, if we can find something that works with Grass in the back end, it would be nice. Because then we have already all these procedures that already implemented within our framework of, um, of water engineering modeling um, and so we went to search some kind of server that would communicate with grass and provide a web processing service and that was easy to find it was PyWPS which is providing native support for grass and R. Uh, obviously PyWPS is implemented in Python so you can use several other packages that are working in Python so if you want to use Shapely or GDAL or whatever kind of um, package that is in Python, running in Python, you can call it through the PyWPS. So it seemed a nice framework, and it was also giving a lot of confidence because it was also one of the, of the first implementations of the WPS standard in the open source world. So <coughs> uh, we went for this PyWPS uh, software, and PyWPS is also depending on map server because the, 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 uh, the, the standard defines that you can send back to the client uh, numbers, letters, strings, so, but also maps like WFS and WMS results of your, um, of your process. So PyWPS is also connecting to map server to send back WMS or WFS data um, to, to the client. Um, then we wanted to build a customized client on the web. Uh, 
Although this server component is working, for example, you can run this process in Quantum GIS, it has a plugin which is called WPS something. You can install this plugin and then you can run this process from Quantum GIS, but we wanted to make like a custom application on the web. So we decided to use open layers. Uh, I, don't, I think everyone knows about it. It's a JavaScript framework, uh, awesome JavaScript framework that allows you to build spatial apps in the web. Um, then we decided also to go with AXTJS is a big, big framework that allows you to develop rich internet applications that are more or less mimifying the desktop applications, and then GeoX, which is just a middle, middleware framework between uh, those two that are already making some widgets which combine both EXT and open layers. Well, so how did you start the development? First thing to do was obviously uh, include all the data inside the grass database. So we set up a location, a map set, for the ones that uh, know how to work with grass. These are always the first procedures. Then we imported the data. We pre-processed the data and made some quality analysis on it. And finally, because we had the, all the procedure in terms of analytical procedure, um, we had already uh, uh, developed. Um, so we just converted this procedure into a Python script that would be called by PyWPS. And well, we converted it to the Python, then we uh, used it in the PyWPS and everything was set up to test this, uh, this uh, web processing service. So I'm going to do a quick demonstration. Hopefully it works. I think it should work. So this is really simple. Uh, it's just a proof of concept. <coughs> It's just a really simple web GIS. Uh, well, you see that we use the open data for uh, const actualization and, uh, you know, just putting some nice maps in the background. And to see how easy it is, and for sure this process is taking like uh, three or four middle steps to come to the end so that you can build. Uh, so normally it's, it's used only by GIS people, you know, because they know the inner workings of, uh, of this processing. But with these kind of apps, the user doesn't need to know what is happening behind. It just, needs, it just knows that, oh, I want to calculate the river basin. So, okay, the first thing that he needs to do is just defining a point in the map and then calculate extent or catchment, sorry. Okay, catchments in that area. Yeah, that will be driven from this point. Now, the, uh, in the process itself, what we do is that we try to find the, the closest point in the river to, to this point that was user-defined. And so from the river, you can calculate the catchment, oh, okay. uh, you know, so... It knows to go, okay. Because, well, you can put the point in, in several places, but then we, because we can snap it to the river and find the closest point in the river, then we can uh, calculate the catchment for that line, okay, oh, for that wow. river. So that's what's happening in the back end. So the user doesn't know anything about this. So now the process was calculated and yeah, we'll zoom into it. So it was really small, <coughs> as you can see. Well, what was the problem here? I can explain you. It's because it's really flat and I'll do another one so that you can see that it's working. <laughs> I was unlucky with the point. Well, hopefully I have. Well, let's put some point over here, hopefully. So, calculate oh, catchment. It's Nottingham. Yeah. So, and you see that the, because the process is running asynchronously, the user is kept uh, always in constant feedback. So, he knows where it is uh, at each stage. So, you can see it's now calculating. And, yeah, there you go. Then we have a catchment there. Um, as you see, th this output was, ca was coming from the server as a WFS, and now we can also, using PyWPS, we can also retrieve a shapefile to the user, so we decided to, um, to give that possibility, so the user can just download it, and there you go, and yeah, inside of the zip file, we will have the catchment shapefile like that. So it was quite easy for uh, each kind of user, it doesn't need to be a GIS guy to make this, uh, this process, and it doesn't need to care about the data or about which operations to do, about which validations to do, everything is happening in the back-end side. 
So, in terms of conclusions, what we can say is that, uh, well, WPS standard um, is really allowing uh, one to develop really high um, complex models and turning it into really transparent uh, tool into the user. I mean, if we all GIS guys uh, know that we can do really simple things to really complex stuff and we can chain lots of operations together and if we give those tools to a, a regular user which is not a GIS guy, it doesn't understand anything about what he's doing. But using WPS, what we can do is that we can say, okay, this tool is specifically to do this. And it doesn't matter if it's just one operation or 30 operations. It's just built on the back end side and the user doesn't need to care about the data and um, about how to make the workflow. So this WPS standard, um, in fact, was developed by GIS people to GIS people, but it can be used with anything, even just calculations, you know, uh, regular calculations and uh, numerical modeling. It doesn't really need to work with geospatial data, but it's mainly directed to or uh, work with uh, geospatial data. Another thing to point out is was that all the implementation in open source software is quite stable and really, really uh, robust. So it's, you can work with it and it's, it's, it, it, it just works, you know, if you, if you have uh, a little bit of knowledge and ex try a bit, it, it just works uh, almost out of the box, obviously not the Python script, but yeah. Um, that's something that you need to do by yourself because uh, the server doesn't know what you want to do. So you need to do it by itself. And you know, another thing is that without open data, we wouldn't be able to make this proof of concept because yeah, it's not only that the data, uh, that the data is open, uh, free, and you can get it, it's that you can also provide services with it. So the only problem, and you saw that in the first catchment, is that this data in terms of uh, spatial resolution is not that um, high spatial resolution. That's why sometimes you get really small catchments. So in areas that are more flat, and everything is flat, it's difficult to have a, a, a good catchment calculation. So it would be nice to have uh, higher resolution data sets so that we could you know, provide a service that is a little bit more um, uh, accurate. I say, but this is just depending on the underlying data. And uh, yeah, I think that is it. Any questions? I think it's uh, 50, 50 meters, I think so. Huh? Uh, would it be possible, uh, okay, in the future, having something that uh, a user can upload his data and then make this analysis? Yeah, yeah. In fact, we are at this moment uh, developing an application which is uh, happening, uh, which is working like that. We have four data sets and we allow the user to upload uh, his own so we can get higher resolutions yeah. uh, of it. And then the process, instead of working with our base data, it starts to work with the user data. So it, it's possible through the WPS process at itself. So it's, 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 yeah, in fact, we are doing it right now. <laughs> Just quickly following on from that, so does that mean you point the WPS process to their source data, or do you actually first copy it up and then point it to your local data? Um, we have a... So for the standard one, in this case, we have pre-processed all the data and it's already there living in the grass database. So um, when we run the process, uh, I don't need to import everything. So it's just faster because it's living there. But if the user uploads uh, its own files, then I need to import it into the grass database and then I can work with it as I would work with uh, any kind of data set. Because the input to your WPS process is something specific to your grass database. You can't say, right, I have a, I don't know, a terrain server here that can give you a DTM. I can just want to point to this, use that data to calculate my calculation. Uh, at this point, no, but it, it really depends on how you implement uh, the WPS itself because you are coding it. So if, if in your WPS process you say that one of the inputs is the URL of another service that is providing you data, then you need to code that logic in the WPS script to go and fetch this data, and then you can work with it. So it's quite flexible. It, in fact, the WPS standard itself is not implementing the process, it's just 
managing. managing, you know, the way of communication between client and server. But it's really flexible because it's Python, so it's really uh, uh, easy to, to, to develop things. It doesn't take ages. Uh, yeah, some, some, it might be discussable about the performance. Until now, from what I've done with PyWPS, the performance is great. Um, but yeah, Python is just nice to, to do quick prototyping and to implement this kind of service. So it's really up to you which inputs uh, you are expecting. It could be a new URL, it could be an integer, a string, it can even be uh, a GML uh, feature or WMS server, whatever. And then you make the logic in the backend script uh, in the server. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, so the part of this case will even do, is Glass able to handle directly the VPS and the VCS? Not the Glass itself, but PyWPS is the one, is the server side component that is dealing automatically with setting up the Glass, the communication between Glass and the PyWPS itself. So you can call any other program that has Python bindings. So for example, this shapefile, to be honest, was immediately output it from grass as a shapefile, but I could use it with OGR because OGR is also has um, Python bindings, so we can call it in GDAL and Spatialite, so um, even PostGIS, you can access things through, through the WPS to PostGIS, insert uh, in the database, you know, make analysis in the database, retrieve it to the PyWPS, and then you say, okay, I want this output as a WMS or as a WFS, and it, it's, it's just really, really flexible. It, it, you can do uh, whatever you want. It just depends on how you code it. Okay, if I wanted to use this tool in like a semi or an urban area, mm -hmm. I would probably have to have higher resolution data yeah, yeah. I'm going to be looking at like vacant lots, um, <coughs> sloughs, yeah. just anywhere I might be able to find a catchment. Yeah. So, and you have to individually point on it to do the calculation to find it. Yeah, yeah. To measure it. So you would have to sort of like have sort of micro task the process and say, I'm going to look in this quadrant, this quadrant, this quadrant, this. Quadrant. Is that how you would do it? No, no. In this, in, 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 this is a well. Um, this is a simple process. It's just a proof of concept. You can put it uh, as much complexity as you want, but this one, you know, uh, it's just you know, you put a point there, and the process itself in the back end is well. This point is not in a, a, a river um, mm -hmm. line, so I'm going to find the closest point in the river. So if you are putting it in an urban area where there is no uh, uh, um, stream it will calculate the closest uh, point uh, that is snapping into the river, the closest river. So uh, if you want to do it in uh, urban areas or, um, I don't know, it's just you need to put uh, uh, new data sets because it's just 50 meter of resolution, so it's not that great, mm -hmm. to be honest. And, um, well, at the national scale, it's nice, at the national scale, you know, so it's just, it's just uh, giving you some outputs. But if you want to really work in small areas, and especially where they are flat, uh, you need higher resolution data. But it's up to you, you know, if you, if you have this data, or even like, like uh, they um, were asking before, if you want to provide the user a way of replacing the data with their own data, it's possible. Mm -hmm. okay. It's really possible. Yeah. And I have to uh, put in grass to run it, or may, is it possible also to link to the system? And which, kind of, uh, which kind of model? Uh, it can be an hydrological model or another way to uh, start well, basin or something. You don't need to put it in grass if you can call it from Python. Uh, okay. okay, so if you have Python bindings, if it's some, something like a C module and, and then it, it, you have the Python bindings to it, then you can call it directly. Otherwise, uh, for example, we had something like this. We had to build a new uh, grass module. So we made a C uh, module, new module, and we have uh, put it in, into grass because it would be faster than in Python. So it was for performance issues. But we could have done it with Python. In, you know, there is this nice uh, add-on to Python module, which is uh, NumPy and SciPy. And this is like providing features really similar to something that is widely known, a proprietary software, and that is uh, for numerical modeling. Yeah.
So you can, you can work with this. It, it really depends uh, on the things that you know how to do. And it, it depends if you, uh, well, if you are worried or not about performance issues. So in this case, for example, we had this complex uh, model that we, we tried it in Python because it was fast, but it was really slow. So we decided to go and made a new C module for Grass, and Grass is working with that. Thanks. Sorry? Sorry? Uh, it's called NatWet. We are we didn't release it yet because, to be honest, the uh, the module itself it was not done by us. So it's from the university, but we are speaking with them, and probably it will be uh, included in future releases of Grass as a new module. You know, R dot NatWet, and it it goes. So this one is only text for River. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just for that um, main purpose. It's just like this, we wanted just to make a proof of concept because WPS is, it's a really nice standard, but it's not being used as much as we were expecting. But you can do it, you know, even for simple things, it's just a nice way to communicate with the server and it's uh, really straightforward. Then you have all this uh, standard defined, the, 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 the server understands what you are asking and the client knows what to ask and how to ask it and how to read the response from the server. So it's just a nice standard to, then you can abstract yourself from these reading inputs, outputs. You just need to worry with the process itself. So it's just, that's why we did it, you know, just as a proof of concept. But it could be much more complex. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.